very quick history lesson. 17 months ago, I was appointed as director of football at Everton Football Club after they'd just been relegated to the championship. I sold a load of players, bought a load of players, applied some moneyball principles, appointed an assistant manager. A year and a half later, we're second in the Premier League. Greetings, my excellent friends. Welcome back to Club 3, Part 9 of the Director of Moneyball. I'm Kirk Sheridan, and what you see before you is real. After 12 matches in the Premier League, we've won 8, drawn 2, and lost 2. And you're not going to believe who we've beaten. If you were with me in the previous episode, you saw us have a spectacular start to the season, beating Newcastle and Chelsea well. We've also beaten Arsenal... And Man City, among others. I cannot believe what I've been seeing here. We have had very narrow victories. We're yet to win a match in the league by two goals. But when we're grinding out results like this, quite frankly, I don't care. Now, you might recall at the end of the previous episode, I was on the verge of signing Smolcic and Vinicius. We were just waiting for their work permits to be approved. They did sign before the end of the transfer window. And I also went in for another couple of signings who definitely look like cracking Moneyball pickups. Firstly, Gabriel Rukovina from Dinamo Zagreb has been a revelation this year. He had played a lot of football in Croatia and was available on a five and a quarter million pound release clause. And quite frankly, since joining, he's been brilliant. He started nine games in the league. He scored four, got one assist, massively outscoring his XG and has basically forced Ramazzani, our player of the year last season, out of his preferred position onto the right flank. And the other player who is yet to set the world alight to the same degree, but I do have faith in long term, Emehan Ilkan, who we picked up from Torino. A £7.5 million fee felt pretty sensible for a player with this kind of potential. He's already a decent Premier League player, fairly consistent, great vision, great flair, can spot a pass. Strangely though, Clark's only picked him to start once in the league. So it's been a slow start for Ilkan. He's obviously still settling in, but I have faith. And you can see the way his values increase. I think this is another Moneyball signing where we'll get a lot of value. We managed a fair chunk of outgoing business on deadline day as well and beyond, in fact. So Melvin Bard, who was our first choice left back last season, I offered him out after we signed Vinicius and he did not like it. He was very unimpressed, but we managed to convince Wren to pick him up for three and a half million pounds. So A profit, which fulfills some Moneyball principles, but not to the degree that I would have hoped for. Jared Branthwaite was never going to get back in the team after we signed some higher quality central defenders in the summer. So we managed to convince Burnley to pick him up for £5 million. Santiago, we have sent out on loan to Sunderland and he's so far scored six goals in 13 starts. George Hall, a player who my career will be inextricably linked to. We did make a significant loss. To be fair, I'd convinced Everton to massively overpay for him a couple of years ago. But then most shockingly of all, at the start of October, we received a bid from Saudi Arabia for Andrew Omabamadeli. They paid £21 million for him, which represented about £3.5 million profit for us. We also have 30% of the profit on any future transfer waiting as well. How could I compete? They're paying him £185,000 a week. So that was a big shock. He was our best performing defender. We let him go outside of the transfer window. No chance to replace him. But what that's allowed me to do is line up Anderson Pino. And this is a kid... I am really excited about. He's only 20 years old, played a good amount of first team football in Brazil and wonder kid. So Pino will be joining Everton in January to supplement the growing ranks of wonder kids at this football club. Lado is a wonder kid. Oteza is a wonder kid. Now Leo Vetzels is a wonder kid as well. So that will be four in the team, despite me saying many times Wonder Kids are overrated. Uh, Yes, I stand by that. They normally are, unless you can find some Moneyball bargains. Coming up for you today, I thought I'd show you two live matches. I've been waiting for this run of form to start falling apart, and it just hasn't. So I'm going to bite the bullet. This might well be the day when our form regresses to the level that I've been expecting it to all season. But we are playing Tottenham up first who are currently managerless. Dean Rastrick is in charge of them on a caretaker basis at the moment because they sacked Thomas Tuchel about four weeks ago. You might notice I put Dean Rastrick on my shortlist for staff because um, he's a bit good. 
And he's the first manager we've come up against this season who actually on paper looks like he could be better than Anthony Clark. So I'm expecting a challenging match. But that said, Spurs have only won once in their last five matches, and that was away at Udinese. So actually, in the league, they're still really underperforming. And I've done my usual mid-season research to find out what team I think Anthony Clark is going to put out on the pitch today. Heddle in goal has been ever-present all season. But what I've been fascinated to see this year is the way that Clark's changed up the roles on the pitch. So same 4-3-3 formation, but we are now playing consistently with wing-backs, whereas last year was always full-backs. And we've now got an inside forward on the left and an inverted winger on the right as opposed to an inverted winger on the left and a flat winger on the right. So some subtle tweaks as we've made that step up to the Premier League to suit the players we've now got in the first team squad. So Vinicius, since he came in, has generally been ever present as a complete wing back on the left. Caligari now playing as wing back on the right. Smolcic, interestingly enough, has been our most consistently picked central defender with Bicetic alongside him. Still no ball-playing defenders being chosen, though. Lado has been a fixture in defensive midfield. And this has largely been the choice in central midfield, with Rida as a central midfielder and Anana as a Metzala. But we have been incredibly flexible, and this does change from match to match. As I mentioned before, though, Rukovina really been picked as an inside forward to maximise his quality. Ramazzani, therefore, is cutting in off of the right as an inverted winger, despite being right-footed. And Orteza is just banging in the goals up front. He's got seven goals so far for us in 13 starts. So how will we perform today away at Tottenham? It's useless me trying to predict anything because every time I have this year, it's gone completely wrong. So um, let's just go and hopefully have a nice day out in North London. Well, I can't lie, Anthony Clark has completely surprised me there. Heddle is in goal with Vinicius and Caligari at wing-back. Smolcic in the centre of defence alongside Onana. Lado in defensive midfield and Rida is playing alongside Mansverk in the centre of midfield. Apart from that, Rukovina, Ramazzani and Oteza as I expected to see. So, let's get underway we have the first corner of the game Caligari to take to float it over probably to the back post it goes into the middle but cleared out Ramazzani runs onto the ball though he's in a good place in the area and Oteza manages to knock in the rebound we are 1-0 up away at Tottenham after eight and a half minutes I can't believe what I'm seeing here this this season is just beyond all expectations I knew that Anthony Clark was a good manager but my word, what we're seeing here is just beyond anything I could have possibly imagined. Oteza has been an absolute revelation, I've got to be honest, since coming in. He's just been consistently banging those goals in. You can see why he's a wonder kid. He's not actually doing anything spectacular on the pitch. He's just brilliant at finding space in the box. A lot of the goals he's been scoring are tap-ins, rebounds, that kind of thing. And how can I can possibly complain about that? Tottenham, though, managed to pick up the ball here, the 27th minute. But Rukovina manages to nick in and nab the ball. Rukovina is through. He's in space. Can he cross it for Ortega? He doesn't need to. Oh, my word. Oh, they bundle it off the line. I thought that was going to go in. Oh, what a fantastic run from Rukovina there. And the ball just rolls across the goal line. We can't quite capitalise. Some pretty catastrophic defending there from, from Tottenham. How has this happened? Spurs don't have an XG of any description whatsoever. I don't understand what I'm seeing here. Please un explain to me how it's half time at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. They've had 64% of possession, but we've had nine shots compared to zero for them. Clark's a managerial tactical genius. Right, second half. It's not going to stay like this forever, is it? There's no way on earth that we're going to be able to keep this up. Tottenham do cut out across from Caligari and it looks like they're building up slowly from the back. Is this going to be the moment when they actually show what they can do and get back into the match? Maybe not, though. I mean, their confidence is probably going to be quite low given the results that they've been getting recently. Oh, that was a chance. That was a chance. Header over the crossbar. Yeah, to see Tottenham performing like this and to see us taking them to the sword it's I've got to say it hurts I'm a Spurs fan in real life I would like to see Tottenham doing a lot better this season than they have been and Thomas Tuchel being sacked is quite oh Ramazzani flashing a shot across goal there but we're looking so good for three points they haven't been able to get a shot on target this second half we're in 
the 76th minute now. And I suspect for the final few minutes of this match, we're going to be coming under some serious pressure. That's a beautiful ball out to their right flank. And their wing back picks it up. It cuts into the area. Is this going to be their chance? Well, no. We managed to clear it out. Reader there coming back to cover defensively. Cuts the pass out. And we managed to clear again. And Reader's on the ball once more. What's he going to do? Just takes it nice and easily. Erkan is on the pitch now. Ramazzani picks the ball up on the right flank. And we are breaking. There's a lot of Tottenham cover. Like, oh, Taser is in! Oh, my word. It's 2-0. I don't believe it. This is absolutely mind-blowing. I'm speechless. What a quality goal. That's exactly what I was saying earlier about a Taser not being spectacular, but just always finding space oh my word this kid is going to be something very very special i can't believe we picked him up for man united for what seven and a half million pounds i think it was he's now valued i think 40 to 50 absolutely incredible he's already playing for argentina anana it, it what is that anana in goal no, oh, that's a different Onana. Oh, my word, that was very confusing there. I saw Onana, but that's that's Tottenham's Onana, not our Onana suddenly having to play in goal. Good. I'm just utterly baffled by what I'm seeing here. And we're on the attack again. 80th minute almost. And on the edge of the area. Oh, my word, are they getting a man sent off here? If so, this looks like it. We've got three points in the bag, my friends. Absolutely unbelievable stuff. And Lado to take the free kick. Unfortunately goes wide. 2-0, away from home, against a very established Premier League team. This is our first season back. We were rubbish a couple of years ago in the Premier League. Caligari floats the ball over Smolcic. It's three. You're seeing a first for this season. This is the first match that we've won in the league by two goals, let alone three. And we've been utterly dominant. Not in terms of possession... That's definitely a change from last year. Anthony Clark has found a way to make sure that we can frustrate teams and stay rock solid defensively despite not having the ball as much as possible. But that's amazing considering the amount of possession that Tottenham had. Look at this match momentum. We were completely pressurising them the entire game. I'm lost for words, genuinely. Anthony Clark. I don't know what to say. Quite frankly, my friends, this is utterly ludicrous. Almost one third of the season gone. We're on 29 points, just one point behind Liverpool at the top of the league. And we're 10 points clear of eighth place Leicester. Are we challenging for Europe? Well, as it turns out, just three days later, we are playing Leicester at home this time. And I really want us to put on a good show for our home fans because although we're flying high in the league, weirdly our away record is so much better than our home record. We've scored 15 away from home in seven matches. But at home in six games, we've scored four goals. These loyal Evertonians deserve some entertainment. And hopefully this amazing team can give it to them. Oteza has just come second in the November Player of the Month award. But he won the Premier League Young Player of the Month award. And look who came second. Other wonder kid, Killian Ladeau. And Anthony Clark is manager of the month. Not really much of a surprise then to see that finally the board have given me an A plus rating. They're delighted with Premier League performance. They're pleased that we were competitive in the Carabao Cup. We got through to the fourth round there. It's just, just these pesky supporters. They're so hard to please. And I think it's basically because we got beaten by Liverpool. But hopefully put on a good show at home against Leicester and I'll get them on side too. Anthony Clark squaring up against Neil Lennon in the opposition dugout this time. Anthony, may the odds be forever in your favour. I'm hoping for a fair amount of rotation in this match. That's why I chose this double header to show you. Yes, there's quite a lot of rotation in that team. Oh, good to see Erkan playing in the centre of midfield. So, yeah, we should get to see a few other players. Sonny Finch up front there. Will be interesting to see how he gets on because despite scoring a bucket load of goals for us last year, just hasn't had a chance in this Premier League team with a taser performing so well. Madison with an early free kick. Though. Oh, what a strike from Madison for Leicester. Not a lot Heddle could do about that, unfortunately. 
plenty of time for us to come back. But that is an absolute... Oh, beautifully just whipped perfectly round the wall and inside the post. There's nothing at all that Heddle could have done about that. But we've been playing so well. I hope we've got an opportunity to get one back early here. Arteza picks the ball up on the left. Mansfeld in the middle. Can he cut it back? It's across to Finch and it's cleared off the line. That is where we need Arteza because if he was in front of the goal there, absolutely that would have been in the back of the net. Finch charging back from up front to pick the ball up. Elkan picks the ball up in midfield. It goes back to Bicetic. We're taking our time here. And Ramazzani has the ball on the right flank. Beautiful through ball to Finch. And it's uh, spectacularly spooned high and wide, sadly. Again, Oteza there probably would have done a lot more. So, 20 minutes or so into the match, we do have a really strong XG now. And Leicester haven't really created anything. Oh, no, what is that? No, don't get sent off, Vinicius. No. Oh. Well, you're seeing both sides of Everton here, aren't you? To be honest, this match after that result against Tottenham was the first time this season I was I was thinking, yeah, we're definitely getting three points in this match. <laughs> Shows how little I know, doesn't it? Football manager gods just conspiring against us once again. I'm glad I managed to show you a 3-0 victory. This might be our toughest defeat of the season. Uh, we'll see. Oh, Ilkan just losing the ball there. Oh, what are we doing? Just clear the ball. Okay, head all, that's fine. Just take it easy. Don't do anything stupid. Mansfeld there. I think that's Mansfeld now playing in the centre of defence with Smolcic on the left after we had... Oh, my word. Why are we dawdling on the ball like that? Come on. <clears throat> Just, we're not making any headway at all. It's a bizarre thing to see because actually we're being given plenty of time on the ball by Leicester, but then we just run ourselves into trouble. Barnes putting the Leicester effort over the top of the bar. How are we lining up now? Don't want to see Leicester's formation. I want to see ours. Yeah, Mansfeld playing as a ball-playing defender. Smolcic at wing-back with Caligari on the left. We've basically got no wingers. We've reverted to an incredibly narrow formation. Hopefully, Clark knows what he's doing. We do still have more possession. We've completed more passes. And our XG is higher. So we're not out of this match. It's possible we could pick up a unlikely equaliser. Maybe. But we would need some highlights uh, in this second half for that to actually happen. Oteza, how is Oteza playing as a winger in that attacking midfield role? I'm not, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. The football manager match engine there playing havoc. With, with the 10 man formation but Garner is bursting clear now oh my word he's got acres of space there's no one with him except Reader is there now the Leicester defence are playing back but Ekatike oh no oh that was our opportunity that felt like if we were going to put one away that was the chance and it's all and by the way so can we just create one more opportunity before the end of the match come on come on no time is running out oh but we're still on 29 points and somehow holding firm in second place we have a corner here reader plays it in small no it comes out to a taser who floats a ball right across no bicetic just heads it straight to the leicester goalkeeper it's a very strange position to be in. In the 89th minute, uh, oh no, what was that? Just dwelling on the ball too long. Thankfully, Leicester put the effort wide. To be disappointed about a 1-0 home defeat to a team in eighth place in the Premier League in our first season back, it, that's a remarkable state of affairs. I just had no idea that we would be able to perform at this level this season. I'm sure none of you did either. Well. I say that, actually, some of you were predicting maybe we could push for Europe in this season ahead. I didn't believe you. I actually now do. We were dominating the match until that sending off. We had moments where our match momentum was better than Leicester's despite being down to 10 men. And we didn't disintegrate even after that red card. So for the difference between our two sides to be a second minute wonderful free kick and for Mansberg to be our player of the match as a ball playing defender... 
when he's a central midfielder by trade, Anthony Clark, you really are an Everton legend in the making. 14 matches played, over two points a game, away at third-placed Man United in a couple of days' time, and if we win, we can go five points clear of them. That sentence just doesn't make sense. Can we hold this run of form together, though? That's the question. And to be honest, your guess is as good as mine. We've got United away up next, but then we're playing Stoke, Chelsea, Wolves, Palace, Brighton. Massively underperforming Arsenal. Honestly, under this man, anything feels possible this season. But surely it is only a matter of time until some of these players attract the attention of some pretty big clubs. We've got our Wonder Kid central defender coming in in January already, but that's probably it unless we have any massive sales because we are all spent out. So this is the squad Clark has to work with for the rest of the season. And we'll be back at the end of January probably for this double header against Brighton and Newcastle to see how many of our wonderful players have been snapped up by other clubs and to find out if we genuinely really are challenging for a European place this season. Absolutely crazy thing to say. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on, of course, to find out the second the next part drops. And in the meantime, be excellent to each other. I'm Kirk Sheridan. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.